starts at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in St. Petersburg, Florida, where these communities and many others are still reeling from Hurricane Adalia. The latest in the aftermath coming up. And let's look out there with live cam. Not as cool as it's been in the past. You know, we've had some nice mornings. It's getting a little more humid, but uh, still not as bad also as <laughs> the hot summer afternoons. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, September 1st, and I'm with you, Steph. I noticed the humidity as soon as I walked out the door this yeah, morning. Yeah, we were getting a little spoiled by the morning part. And it's like, okay, well, at least the mornings are nice, but now we're getting into... The drier air, air appears to be gone for now. Justin Horn is here to talk about our Friday. New day, new month. September's here. We can say goodbye to August, which was a rough month for us. And you're right about the humidity. It's back this morning, so it's, it's going to be a little more humid today. Still by the afternoon, we'll lose some of that humidity and uh, it won't be just a horrible evening for Friday Night Football and things like that, uh, but still hot. And as we look back at summer 2023, it's so many records. We've detailed some of them. We're going to show those to you coming up. September, averages go down. It does get better. We'll talk about what we can expect in late September. And, of course, it's Labor Day weekend. What about the rivers, the coast? How does that forecast look? We'll take a look at the river flows and the beach forecast for you coming up as well. First, though, we go outside, 79 degrees. We've got clear skies. Dew point is at 68. So that's that number that Mark and Steph were talking about. It's, it's elevated this morning. It's higher than it has been with southerly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Your Kesa 12-hour forecast, <clears throat> excuse me, 76 at 7 o'clock by noontime, 93, and then we'll be up around uh, 100 again today. Another triple-digit day in the forecast as we start off September on a hot note with a partly cloudy skies during the afternoon, but no rain chance, no rain chance. There is a small chance showing up on Sunday. We'll talk more about that as well coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, San Antonio police have arrested two suspects in connection with a March robbery that turned into a murder case. 20-year-old Mariah Cabrera and 21-year-old Javion Johnson were arrested and charged with murder last night. According to SAP, one of the suspects organized a drug deal online and set up a meeting with the victim, 20-year-old David Allen Resentes. Resentes met the pair near the 3200 block of El Paso Street, where the suspects ambushed, robbed, and shot Resentes, who later died. Detectives were able to use video surveillance and other leads to identify Cabrera and Johnson. SAPD's covert unit and U.S. Marshals Task Force assisted detectives in locating the suspects who took them into custody without incident. Both are charged with murder. SAPD did not disclose who shot the victim. It's September 1st, and that means new laws regarding school safety, crime, gender, voting, and guns in Texas officially goes into effect today. Governor Greg Abbott and Texas lawmakers passed more than 1,100 bills during the 88th legislature, and 774 of those are now law. Among those is a sweeping school safety bill that requires an armed person at every school campus, the puppy mill bill that clamps down on breeders, the Death Star bill that returns sovereign re regulatory powers to Texas, and a bill that adjusts sales tax for several health-related and family care products. Now, other new laws address road safety, books and schools, transgender issues, fentanyl, workplace violence, electric vehicle registration, and hair discrimination. For a list of the most notable laws that are now in effect, you can visit our website at kset.com. It's also a sad day for those with student loans. Starting today, interest on federal student loans will start accruing once again. Borrowers are required to make their first payment in three years starting in October. The U.S. Supreme Court struck down the Biden administration's student debt cancellation earlier this year. The White House has already rolled out its new income-driven repayment plan. Now to the aftermath of Adalia, the storm bringing damaging tornadoes, severe flooding, and powerful winds from Florida to the Carolinas. As the recovery process continues, President Biden is vowing federal resources to the area's hardest hit. And as ABC's M. Wynn reports, he has plans to survey the damage tomorrow. This morning, Idalia from Florida to the Carolinas, leaving behind a trail of devastation. In the big bend of the Sunshine State, where Idalia made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, buildings and businesses destroyed. It was heartbreaking. Shed many tears. And just thank God nobody died. Houses ripped from their foundations, cars and debris littered the landscape. 
Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, more than 24 hours after Dahlia had passed, most of the waters have receded, except some neighborhoods are still flooded, like this one up to 10 inches. This mother of five returned from evacuation to find her home inundated with up to two feet of water. You just brought it all out here? Yeah, uh, they're going to, we have a dump truck where the city said they were going to come pick everything up. So we're just trying to get it all out, wow. get the house dried out. It sucks to lose everything. Outside this pile of their belongings, all of it destroyed. Everything, including her home itself. Where are you going to so, go after this? Um, well, we still kind of have to figure that out, but we're safe and healthy and we'll, everything is replaceable. President Biden signing a major disaster declaration for Florida with plans to survey the damage on Saturday. So our immediate priority is working with state and local officials to really understand what their needs are. President Biden is asking Congress for billions of dollars in extra disaster relief funding in the wake of Adelia and the wildfire disaster in Maui. M. Wynn, ABC News, St. Petersburg. Back here in Texas, the Austin Police Department is investigating a deadly shooting that occurred at the Arboretum Shopping Center last night. Reports indicate two people have been killed. Three more were hurt. The shooter also died of a gunshot wound. One person was taken to an Austin area hospital with life threatening injuries, while two others were treated at the scene with minor injuries. According to police, there is no threat to the public. Pope Francis has arrived in Mongolia to encourage one of the world's smallest and newest Catholic communities. It is the first time a pope has visited the landlocked Asian country. It also comes at a time when the Vatican's relations with Mongolia's two powerful neighbors, Russia and China, are once again strained. Francis arrived in the Mongolian capital this morning after an overnight flight passing through Chinese airspace. They gave the pontiff a rare opportunity to send a note of greetings to President Xi Jinping. Following a welcoming ceremony, Francis plans to rest for the remainder of the day. His official program begins tomorrow and will last through Monday. Friday morning, 437, 78 degrees. Pull your heartstrings on social media only to pull cash from your pocket. Up next, how some social media scammers post, then make you pay. Right now, we're keeping an eye on an overturned vehicle. This is uh, down there on the uh, surface streets off of I-35 on the far southwest side. This camera's at 35 in Palo Alto, and you see first responders are there on the scene. As I said, we'll keep an eye on it, and then we'll talk to Stephen coming up at the top of the hour. And it's back to the humidity out there, uh, 78 degrees, although we're still in the 70s. You can feel the difference from yesterday morning, definitely. And we're going to be checking in with Justin to see what we can expect over your Labor Day weekend. We'll be right back. 440, welcome back on social media. You'll sometimes see and share posts about missing kids or lost pets, but they may not be what they see. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, you could be sharing a scam and not even know it. Scrolling social media, puppy dog eyes like this catch your eye and heart. Someone is desperately searching for the owner of a dog just found injured on the side of the road. Please bump and share. You feel compelled to share. But hold on, it's likely fake. It is a bait and switch where they'll try to get as many people to share a lost pet, a missing person, or missing item. Even missing children. We searched the words, this is the most recent picture of my son. We found one, two, three, four photos of a boy named Tyler, but different last names. So what's going on? Scammers prey on emotions and urgency to get you to share their post. And once it's spread, they edit the post to something completely different, like a fake ad with a malicious link. And your friends buy in thinking you support that. It's not always obvious either. One viewer said she shared a Barbie movie quote and days later, the post was changed to an ad for a quilt website. And a parent on a new group school page sees ads like this. The link appears to be a shirt order form, but it's fake. Scammers want you to click on the link to steal your money or information. So to keep from helping the scammers. We'll pause, take a breath. Before you share, consider the source verify that person is a real person. A new profile or one with few friends may be fake. And if comments are turned off, that's a red flag too. Bottom line, sharing isn't always a good thing. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. It's amazing what happens. I posted about Pigskin Classic you know, uh -oh. as a, to promote on uh -huh. social media. And all of a sudden, all these bogus links to stream all the games that were not KSAT started oh, no. showing up. 
So you pull them off as fast as you can and then they reappear. They're very resourceful. Yeah, you try to keep that off your off your page, definitely. And, and that's even if they're real. Could be bots. 442, 77 degrees. Up next, a warning for swimmers ahead of the holiday weekend, especially if you're headed to an Atlantic Coast destination. Welcome back. It's 445. Now millions will head to Atlantic Coast beaches for Labor Day weekend, and they need to be careful due to the conditions. ABC's Ginger Z has today's GMA first look. In this morning's GMA first look, a warning for swimmers ahead of the holiday weekend. Almost the entire Atlantic coast is on alert for life-threatening rip currents and some places getting 7 to 11 foot waves. It's a dangerous concoction for anybody going to the beach. We have a, a rip current recipe for disaster right now. The full moon's pulling on the current stronger than ever and then the storm adds waves and wind that just makes things that much more dangerous for everyone. I experienced what it's like being in a rip current firsthand about a decade ago with the San Diego lifeguard and coast guard. So my instinct is to swim directly where I came from, but then I'm going to have to go against the current. And coming up at 7 a.m., I'm going to show you what to do if you find yourself trapped in a rip current. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ginger Z, ABC News, New York. We have good news on the roads. Almost as soon as we showed you that uh, overturned vehicle, 35 Palo Alto down at Somerset, uh, it cleared. So it's gone right now. That was on the far southwest side. We have a couple of stalled vehicles right now, and I believe construction 35 at Topperwine, and no video stream there. So Yeah, it's not sunlight out. <laughs> Trans got to know if you're watching right now, you already know about that yeah. bad camera. It's okay. The other ones are good. Happy Friday, gang. Oh, yes, it is Friday. Happy Friday. Thank goodness. Yeah. Glad it's Friday. College football is back. High school football is Aww. back. I uh, love all that stuff. It is going to be a warm Labor Day weekend. I'll warn you there. Temperatures will be back where we are, have been used to, back around 100 degrees. Uh, let's take a look at all the records we set this summer. So many of them. Hottest summer on record. August was the hottest month ever we've ever seen for any month. Longest stretch of 100 degree days. We set that earlier this summer. Most 105 degree days. Uh, 26 record highs. Ninth driest summer on record. You name it. We set a record this summer. It's pretty incredible how many records it went down. So uh, we have an article about this on KSAT.com. You can go check it out. Uh, talking about the hottest summer we've ever seen. At least since records have been kept back to 1885 here in San Antonio. And thankfully, we're going into September. And uh, hopefully it does get a little bit better for us. We got to talk about the drought monitor. It came in yesterday, shows exceptional drought for much of our area. I guess this isn't uh, much of a surprise, but it is starting to spread a little bit more. We're seeing that along the Texas coast and then here across central Texas and all of Bear County now within that exceptional drought. So that's that dark maroon color you see there. That's as bad as it gets. The soil is just so very dry. And that's why we talk about that fire concern almost every day, because with everything as dry as it is, Flames will go up quickly and spread quickly. So the drought is still very much in place. And with that in mind, we got to talk about the rivers too. If you're heading out to the rivers this weekend, and a lot of people are trying to find a cool place to be, just know that there's not much stream flow really in any of our rivers. Uh, as you look out towards Nueces, over towards Uvalde, nothing there. Same story for the Frio near Concan. It's not flowing, which is well below average. Uh, as you get over towards uh, Medina River near Lacoste, again, no flow. That doesn't mean there's not water in the river. It's just not flowing. And then up towards Guadalupe, which has been a problem all year long, no flow there. Uh, that's near Spring Branch. Now, the Comal is still flowing as it often is. It's at 159 feet. It actually did come up a little bit uh, in recent weeks, so that's good news. But it's still below average. If you're going to go float the river, Comal is probably uh, the place to be. Uh, it's still low flow, but at least uh, it is flowing. As we look outside for you right now, 79 degrees. Heat index is at 81. So there's a little bit more humidity this morning than what we've seen previous mornings. 78 in New Braunfels, 74 Seguin, 70 in Bernie, 73 right now in Kerrville. And there's a look at the dew points. A little elevated. We're talking upper 60s here versus the 50s we had been talking about last couple of days. As we head towards the afternoon, the dew points still drop off some, just not as much. And so we're looking at dew points in the mid 50s. I think the evenings will still be comfortable. Friday night football, it won't be all that humid. 
Uh, temperatures will still be hot, but it just won't. Uh, we won't have the heat index. 100 Canyon Lake, 101 in San Antonio today. 102 Castroville, 100 in Pandera. Boy, we are just having to get used to those kind of numbers. And there's a look at the football forecast. 97 at kickoff, 91 at halftime. Sunsets around 7:57 this evening, and look for an easterly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Very quickly, the big picture here: we've got some showers to our east, some monsoonal moisture to our west, but nothing. Nothing across the state of Texas. And as we look at the water vapor, a little spin right here. There's an upper level low, but on the west side of it, very, very dry. That's that yellow and orange color. And we stay on the west side of this thing, even though it drifts west. I just don't think it's going to do much for us. Maybe kick off a shower or two on Sunday, and that's it. We have added some very small chances into the forecast on Sunday, but nothing to get excited about. So 101 Saturday, 100 Sunday, Labor Day, 100. Just a hot and mostly sunny Labor Day weekend for the most part. And the extended forecast will go triple digits on Tuesday, maybe slip just below that by Wednesday and Thursday. Still nothing in the long term that catches our eye, but uh, again, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll talk about the September climatology coming up. Averages do drop. I mean, it, temperatures are going to drop. It just has to happen. Yeah, I mean, we, we believe you. At least we had like a short break earlier in the week. Very tiny break. Very, very small break. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Time now for 51, 77 degrees. Up next, why it's the end of the road for Denzel Washington's The Equalizer as the third film debuts in theaters this weekend. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, six, two, Fireball eight. Daily four numbers, four, six, five, one, Fireball four. Cash five, four, 11, 21, 32, 35. And your Texas two-step, eight, 23, 27, 33, bonus ball 25. The final installment of Denzel Washington's Equalizer franchise is now in theaters, plus Oprah and The Rock team up to help Maui. For the latest to what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. That's what I'll give you to decide your fate. It's the end of the road for The Equalizer, the third film in the Denzel Washington franchise. It's theaters this weekend, and we're told it'll be the last. So why is now the right time to say goodbye? Director Antoine Fuqua tells me. You know, the first one is finding his purpose. The second one is making peace with the past. This one is just finding a place and, and finding a home. And I think he's done that in this film. And so from that point, uh, I believe let Robert McCall sail off into the Mediterranean, you know, and have a little peace for a while. The Equalizer 3 is expected to top the box office this Labor Day weekend, <laughs> but predictions have it earning less than the opening weekends of the first two films. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Taylor Swift's concert movie is already a box office hit, according to Deadline, which says pre-sale tickets flew past 10 million bucks in the first few hours Thursday after it was announced that a concert doc of Swift's Eras Tour will be hitting theaters in October. Uh, you know, when Oprah texts me this idea, you know, first of all, we were texting when this tragedy took place. Oprah and The Rock teaming up to help Maui, the two megastars donating $10 million in direct cash to those affected by the Lahaina and Kula fires, part of what they're calling the People's Fund of Maui. They're also encouraging donations. What do I do? What do I do? This is what you do. <laughs> And her upcoming film, Challengers, might have skipped the Venice Film Festival because of the Hollywood strikes. But today is Zendaya's birthday, the actress and singer turning 27. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Four minutes till 5, 77 degrees. Some of those with student loans have been dreading. Payments are one step closer to resuming. And up next, how the Biden administration is implementing a year-long grace period to borrowers. Plus, what's next now for convicted murderer Sasha Scar after she was found guilty in the shooting death of San Antonio rapper Martel DeRuin. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide looking over at Highway 281 at the quarry where things are moving early this Friday morning. And we have Stephen Cavazos in the studio now. We're going to check in with him after the break. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. New overnight, a man is killed along Loop 410 near Fredericksburg Road. Up next, San Antonio police explain how this happened. Plus, a convicted murderer will be back in a Bear County courtroom today. Up next, what a jury will now decide for Sasha Scar. Good news, bad news. Friday is here. Bad news, the humidity is here for the end of the week. And the very beginning, 
of the month of September. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, September 1st. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. You're right. Friday is the good news. I, I stepped outside. I was like, oh, no, it's gone. We had kind of cool mornings the past couple of mornings. It's been very comfortable, but here we are Friday morning. Long Labor Day weekend is finally here. Good morning, Justin. Hey, good morning to you. Yes, everyone's getting ready for the for the long weekend, and I would like to tell you that it's going to cool down some. It's just not. We're still going to see these hot temperatures. If you're heading off to the bus stop this morning, temperatures aren't horrible. We're in the mid 70s, but as uh, you guys mentioned, humidity's up just a little bit this morning. We'll see easterly winds five to ten miles per hour. Quiet and, and warm. High temperatures today, we're at 101. So hot. I, I do think humidity comes down some during the afternoon hours. So a little drier there. Uh, especially into the evening. So Friday night football, warm, but uh, thankfully not as uh, as humid. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going on outside. 79 in San Antonio right now. Heat index is 82, so that's what it feels like. Seguin, 74. Uh, Bernie, 70. Kerrville, 73. We've got light winds at this hour. Clear skies. I just checked outside. No cloud cover. We could see a little bit this morning, but I don't anticipate a lot. And the high temperatures today around the state, more triple digits 102 in Austin 100 Houston 97 in Corpus Christi 104 in Laredo. So another hot one statewide again today. Uh, the tropics are heating up. We'll look at that plus uh, another look at the September climatology. Uh, we will see some better weather ahead. I promise more on that in a bit. We head over to Stephen now. It's Friday morning. How are things looking? Well, I'm looking forward to that forecast, Justin. Uh, let's get a look around town 37 at Carolina. Now we did start off with some bumps in the road, folks. You may have seen that crash that we showed you earlier near Somerset. That's already cleared out, so we're not worried about that anymore. And thankfully, if you have to hit the roads in the next few minutes, a lot of these trans guide cameras are showing a smooth commute. But be on the lookout as one incident cleared. Another one popped up. This one along Loop 1604 westbound right there near I-10. You know, there's plenty of road work taking place out there. This crash came in a recording to text on just a few minutes ago, so we'll see if our friends at Transguide can show us the conditions out there. But as always, drive safe and let's hope everyone else is doing okay. Wide look at the map does show a very quiet start, as you saw on a lot of those Transguide cameras. Our map is showing the same thing. If you are heading into town, you are in luck. That journey from Bernie should be good. 23 minutes at this hour along I-10 eastbound. If you're heading in from Bolverde, it should be about a 26-minute drive along 281 southbound. And right now, for the drive time from 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels, should be about 24 minutes. But while the cameras on uh, Transguide aren't showing any issues, I'll see if our friends at Transguide can get that shot of I-10 near 1604. Uh, there may Maybe flashing lights out there, and it looks like we have a frozen camera there at 35 at Judson. The sun's not out just yet, but we'll have more updates, including some new transportation laws that went into effect today. We'll have more updates for you coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he got pinned between a vehicle and guardrail along Loop 410. It's all happened around midnight. The westbound lanes of 410 near Fredericksburg Road. When rescue crews arrived, they found the man pinned between a guardrail and his vehicle. Police say the man was on the side of the road and out of his vehicle for an unknown reason, when at some point his truck rolled forward and pinned him between it and the barrier. He was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. Bear County jury will start deliberating today to decide how long now convicted murderer Sasha Scar will be in prison. She was found guilty in the shooting death of Martel Darun, a San Antonio rapper in 2021 at his apartment complex near La Cantera. But she was not arrested until two weeks later after his body was found. Every day is it's, it's very hard. I haven't slept in a very long time. Um, it's just as a mother to lose a son and to lose him that way it's, it's just it's unimaginable and i wouldn't wish that on anybody nobody ever scar declined a plea deal for 20 years last week she now faces the possibility of up to life in prison today new state laws in texas officially go into effect Judges around the state handed up last minute rulings on a few of those bills. Texas Supreme Court judges ruled in favor of allowing a ban on gender affirming care for minors to move forward. This makes Texas the most populated state with the restrictions on transgender children, according to the Associated Press. And in another case for LGBTQ plus issues, a law preventing certain drag performances that are deemed sexually explicit would also go into effect. But a federal judge from Houston issued a temporary restraining order against that, saying it violates First Amendment rights. However, if it becomes permanent, that ruling would probably be appealed by the state. 
And finally, a book rating law that helps to prevent children from reading sexually explicit material is now also in effect. Those are just some of the 774 new laws now in effect. For a complete list, visit our web article on ksat.com. Also not a so good day for millions of people with student loans. Pandemic era pause on loan payments is coming to an end. However, as ABC's Derek Dennis reports, the debate over student debt relief is far from over. A big day ahead for federal student loan borrowers this morning. Interest on their balances will begin to accrue again after a three-year pandemic pause and ahead of a full restart of loan payments next month. There's already a mix of anxiety and obligation. If you're getting an education to do something like teaching like I did, you're going to have a job. So if with the job comes expenses and you just you need to pay back what you owe. I think that student debt is really holding back these young people from making other decisions that really can contribute to our economy and we all are responsible for that. Many borrowers had their hopes of relief dashed after the Supreme Court struck down President Biden's student loan debt cancellation plan this summer, ruling the president does not have the authority to erase $400 billion in debt without congressional approval. We find ourselves in a situation where because of that promise, a lot of us, literally tens of millions of us, made decisions with our lives to move forward. I didn't give borrowers false hope, but the Republicans snatched away the hope that it was, they were given, and it's real, real hope. The White House arguing the plan would have put money back in people's pockets. They then would give back to the economy, right, or be able to buy a home, or able to, to, uh, uh, to do things that actually build back the economy. The president is now working on a plan B. He's looking to invoke the Higher Education Act of 1965, which allows government-backed student loans and grants to be adjusted, waived, or outright canceled, though details of the plan and who might benefit are still unclear. While student loan payments will restart October 1st, exact payment dates will depend on the lender. Borrowers should start receiving their new bills in the days ahead. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Time now is 5.07 and 77 degrees for now. There were problems with the cockroaches and some other pests back there and that there was a need for some cleaning. Our Tim Gerber stops by a local supermarket where a bakery and cafe were dealing with a pest problem. The other violations inspectors found and what the businesses told Tim next. Plus, Microsoft finally launches a much anticipated space adventure game, Starfield. Up next, why reviews are mixed so far. Forecast reviews also a little bit mixed, but I'm not alone on that. <laughs> Outside, we take a look at your Friday morning out at San, San Antonio International Airport. Glad you're with us to start your day here on GMSA. 11 minutes past the hour. Welcome back. A pizza place with a pest problem gets a failing score just months after posting a nearly perfect health inspection score. And the pair of businesses inside a supermarket were found with numerous live and dead roaches. Our Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door. Fourth Street Pizza, located in the 900 block of 24th Street, failed its July inspection. The inspector giving them a 69, a 30 point drop off from the 99 they got back in March. The cold hold was too warm. Several items were condemned. They also had to toss out white moldy tomatoes. Raw chicken was sitting above non raw foods. Bleach was stored on top of a fridge. Foods listed as keep frozen were found stored at room temp in the kitchen, which was 100 degrees. There were ants, gnats, and flies throughout the kitchen area. The business also in need of a good cleaning. I stopped by this week to find out what happened, but the business wasn't open. They were scheduled to have a reinspection. <laughs> Poco Loco Supermercado, located in the 6,000 block of Ingram Road, earned an 80. Several cold hold units and coolers were not keeping proper temps. The business told to fix them or be forced to discard foods found above temperature. Multiple flies were found in the food prep area, and so were multiple holes for them to enter in the back receiving area. They needed to clean some vents and clean the bathrooms to remove the foul odor. 
Inside the same supermarket, El Folklore Bakery got a 76. A worker was touching a cake with bare hands while decorating it, and there was no hand washing sink in that area. There were multiple gnats in the food prep area and numerous live and dead roaches found all over the place. The business told to hire pest control, provide proof, and do a thorough cleaning. The inspector warning if one more roach is found, they could be shut down. I'm Tim Gerber with KSAT 12. I do the behind the kitchen door and I just follow up on the health reports. I stopped by to see if they've made the required corrections. This is all the things they wanted you guys to fix. Are you aware that that stuff was fixed? Yeah. Okay. Maya Cafe is located right next to the bakery. They too had a problem with roaches. The inspector gave them an 82. A manager told me over the phone they've made the corrections and continue to deal with the pests. Did you guys hire the pest control services? Say that again. We have a different company already, so we fix that. For Behind the Kitchen Door, I'm Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. 513, 77 degrees. Up next, a first look at YouTube's music's new rede redesign that now includes a new comment section. Another sign the machines are coming for us, how an AI-piloted drone was able to beat three human drone racing champions. In today's Tech Bytes, the much-anticipated Microsoft space game Starfield has arrived, and it may be the biggest video game launch of the year. With more than 130 hours of content and more than 1,000 stars and planets to explore, Starfield appears to be an early hit with critics. YouTube Music is rolling out a new design for its Now Playing feature, hoping to make it more social. Users will be able to read and or post comments while listening to their selections, but some users are grumbling, saying they prefer listening to music in peace. And finally, a drone powered by artificial intelligence has beaten some of the best drone racers at their own game. The racers had a week to learn a course while AI used deep reinforcement learning. Come race day, the AI drone beat the humans 15 out of 25 times. Well, those are your Tech Bites on this Friday. Have a great day. All right, Stephen, good morning. What's happening? Well, uh, not a whole lot, thankfully. Uh, it's Friday, we, and I feel like we we're crawling all the way to the end of the work week and the start of a yeah. new month. Does it not feel that way? It, it yeah. has been. I no. think maybe it's the heat. We'll say that. Uh, sure. You know, <laughs> it could be the Always heat. blaming the weather. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it could be the traffic. Uh, thankfully, oh, this morning, true. we are off to a good start as we get a look around town. We did have some problems that were reported earlier. Thankfully, they appear to be minor. But as we get a look, there's 37 at Carolina. You can see traffic is moving uh, very light in that area and 37 at Pecan Valley. Same situation over there, folks. We did have some problems reported earlier over on the southwest side that is cleared out, but when one issue clears, another one tends to pop up. I talked to our friends at Transguide about this crash along Loop 1604 westbound at I-10. It's over on the northwest side. Now, it does appear that our friends over there are still looking for the cameras to see if we can get the perfect shot to show you guys, but right now they are still on the hunt for that image, and as soon as they have it, They'll put it on our wall and we'll make sure that we put it on your TV screen. But why look at the map, guys? Thankfully, we are off to, again, a quiet start for the majority of commuters out there. Uh, no congestion just yet, but we're going to have to keep a close eye on things as the morning commute does get moving. Plenty of green on the screen, so you have quiet roads. That's how you can expect your commute to con roll out. But uh, yeah, Justin, it definitely feels like uh, it took forever to get to this Friday, and uh, hopefully you have some better news to report in the weather department. Well, it feels like it took forever to get to September, but we are here. Here, September 1st, 94 is the average high today, 73 is the average low. So that's how we start the month. But let me show you how we end the month of September. What we have to look forward to, the average high drops all the way down to 87 by the end of the month. The average low is 66. Uh, the record low is 41. That was set back in 1941 on September 27th. The record high is 111. Set back on September 5th in 2000. So we have a wide range of temperatures we can see in September, but it is a transition month. And of course, our equinox is on September 23rd. So things will get better. Climatology tells us it will get better. But in the meantime, we have a lot of heat to deal with still. 79 outside, clear skies, 74% humidity. That's up from yesterday. If you remember, we had lower humidity to start. Uh, we'll see uh, some elevated dew points this morning. I think they do come down a little bit this afternoon. South southwesterly winds at about five miles per hour, and it is another air quality alert day. We have another day with some elevated ozone levels, so just heads up there. We've seen that last couple of days. Not only that, 
We have a little bit of smoke in the atmosphere too. Could be all the way down from Canada. It's in light amounts, but it is there. There's a little bit of haze in the atmosphere. Dew points this morning in the 60s and 70s, so we're starting off fairly humid. The dew points jumped all the way up to 70 here in San Antonio. But as we look at the forecast today, we start off very humid, but we fall off back into the 50s by the afternoon. These numbers are a little bit higher than previous days, but it's uh, low enough to where uh, during the evening hours, it's still pretty pleasant. Uh, the case at 12 hour forecast 99 at three o'clock we're at 100 by 4 p.m 101 is the high today 97 at seven o'clock 94 at 8 p.m so any friday night plans uh, it'll still be in the 90s for the most part during the evening hours it takes until probably 10 o'clock for us to drop down into the 80s let's talk tropics now and dahlia has pretty much fallen apart uh, there's not much left uh, she's just a remnant low but we still have a category one hurricane with franklin and then Jose right next to Franklin as a tropical storm and then a wave just south of that with a 70 percent chance of development. So a cluster of tropical activity here right around the island of Bermuda. But none of these systems are headed towards the United States. They'll all move back out into the Atlantic. And there's another wave down here that has a very good chance of developing. This likely becomes Katia as it moves off to the west. And then there's a wave behind that. So it stays pretty active in the Atlantic, but nothing that uh, jumps off the page or is an imminent threat to the United States right now. So uh, we'll keep tabs on that. Speaking of the tropics, though, if you're heading down to the coast this weekend for the Labor Day weekend, looks good. 90 both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the bays will be smooth. Gulf uh, seas at about two feet, so that's not bad. Wind southeast at about 10 miles per hour. And water temperatures are still warm, anywhere from 85 to 87 down there around Port A. Extended forecast, 101 Saturday, 100 Sunday. There is a very, very small chance of a shower on Sunday, but uh, anything we see is going to be uh, very, very isolated. Uh, maybe by the middle part of next week, we'll see temperatures drop below 100. And we're, right now we're forecasting 99 on Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, 99 is better than 100. <laughs> it's, it, is, it is better. Uh, and one of these days we'll get uh, a cold front. You, you yeah. carry our September hopes and dreams, Justin Horn. I'm trying so hard. I know you are. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 522, 77 degrees. And if you were not able to afford or get tickets to Taylor Swift's latest concert tour, we have the next best thing up next when you can get a behind the scenes look at her show for the price of a movie ticket. Old mattress keeping you up and letting you down? Nectar's Labor Day sale is delivering our sweetest deal ever right to your door so you can try out an award-winning Nectar mattress in your home today. That's right, sleep on it, risk-free for a full year with Nectar's unbeatable 365-night trial. And with our unheard of forever warranty, you know everything's gonna be all right. Right now, you can save big with 33% off everything and as little as $34 a month in free shipping. But a deal this sweet won't last. Visit Nectarsleep.com to get yours today. With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. So you can live your greatness. And for kids, try Children's Allegra, the number one allergist recommended non-drowsy brand. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside. And it helps prevent streaks and hay. WetJet is so worth it. Love it or your money back. If you couldn't make it to a certain music superstar's latest mega tour, you're getting another shot for the price of a movie ticket. CNN's David Daniel explains in today's Hollywood Minute. People would come up to me and they'd be like, are you going to just like do a show with like all the albums in it? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be called the Eras Tour. See you there. Taylor Swift is taking her Eras Tour to the big screen, a two-hour, 45-minute concert film documenting the singer-songwriter's record-breaking tour is due in theaters on October 13th, including AMC IMAX theaters. Hours after tickets went on sale, websites for many AMC theaters showed nearly full. You're awake now. 527, 77 degrees. Up next on GMSA, a new month, but the same old problems in Washington, why a potential government shutdown could happen by the end of the month. Plus, how the Biden administration wants to implement a new gun rule aimed at curbing gun show and internet sales loopholes. Plus, what you need to know about a Kia vehicle recall that could leave your junk stuck in your trunk, kind of. We'll explain. It's a new month, but same old problem looming in Washington, the threat of another government shutdown. It's going to take a long, a concerted, bipartisan effort to get our fiscal house back in order. 
Up next, why the government's metaphorical wallet is set to be empty later this month when the current fiscal year comes to an end. We got there with live cam, and once again, when I stepped outside this morning, humidity was there to greet me. I was like, where did you come from? I thought you went away for a little bit, but here we are. We're hoping that you leave. 5.30, yeah. good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Friday, September 1st. And that's the good news. Happy Friday. Thanks mm. for joining us. Yeah, happy Friday, everybody. Yay. Happy Yay. Friday. Yeah, you know, it'd be nice if, if it's going to be this hot, at least be dry. <laughs> Let's right. lose the humidity, which right. we did for a couple days, but now it's back, as mm -hmm. you pointed out. And the humidity is fairly high this morning. Good news, it won't be so high this afternoon uh, if you have plans to be outdoors. Uh, it's still going to be another hot day. Uh, we do want to pass along to the pollen count yesterday. 1,720 molds are still high. Molds have been a problem last several days. Uh, they've been in the uh, high category. Here's our forecast for today. 101 feels like number, it could go as high as 102 maybe uh, briefly, but I don't think there's going to be much of a heat index today, especially as we get into the late afternoon. That he, the humidity levels will come down. Football forecast. We've got some teams playing tonight. Uh, actually, quite a few games going on. At kickoff, it will be around 97. That sunset, keep in mind, is at 757. And at halftime, we're still at 91. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. So it will be a warm evening for football. In a hot weekend in general, uh, if you have outdoor plans, we'll talk more about the, the river flows, which aren't great. And as uh, we mentioned last half hour, the beach forecast, which is actually pretty good if you're heading down to Port A. More on that in a little bit, but we'll head over to Stephen now. And uh, hopefully that Friday morning can commute is quiet. Uh, well, Justin, it started off a bit rocky out there, and we have some better news to report. That crash that we saw on the northwest side has cleared out, according to TxDOT. But behind me, we're starting to see a few more folks out there at I-10 at the Y. You can see a lot of that traffic is not necessarily building, but just the roads are getting busier. They're always expected around this time, and we can expect to see even more vehicles as the morning commute does get moving. A lot of folks are ready to drive off into the weekend, but if you have an early start to your morning commute, the good news is this crash right behind me at 1604 westbound right there near I-10 has cleared out. Now our friends at Transguide didn't necessarily have a shot of the conditions out there, but we did know that first responders were out there for roughly about 30 minutes or so. So it appears to be a minor crash. And again, that looks like it has cleared out. The wide view of the map shows the majority of commuters have it easy this morning, which we love to see. And if you are heading into San Antonio this early in the morning, it's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton. We have about 29 minutes along I-37 northbound. Along US-90 eastbound, it should take you just a little under half an hour to get half an hour to get here to San Antonio. And right now that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 16 minutes along I-35 northbound. Want to get it back here at the I-10 at the Y, where we see traffic is moving again just fine, but we'll have more updates for you, and I'll have more updates on some new transportation laws that go into effect today. That update coming up in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. What looks like an unexpected stop on the road has turned deadly for a driver. It happened just a few hours ago on Loop 410 near Fredericksburg Road, and Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand this is what you might call a freak accident. That man was hit by his own truck. Well, that's right. It was a freak accident, but it's potentially something that could happen to any one of us. You get out of your car, say, to check on a flat tire, but then you get in even worse trouble. Now, in this case, San Antonio police say this driver was pinned by his truck against the guardrail of westbound Loop 410 near the Fredericksburg exit. This happened around midnight. Officers did not say why that driver got out of his pickup, but somehow after he did, his truck started rolling forward, pinning him against the guardrail. And when police and EMS arrived, there wasn't much they could do. They say that man was already dead from his injuries. A witness was able to tell officers exactly what happened. Uh, the accident did have this westbound highway shut down uh, right in this area for a while, but right now it looks like things are back to normal and traffic is moving uh, freely as it usually does. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 534, new month, and with it comes an old problem, a potential government shutdown. The Biden White House calling on Congress to pass a temporary spending bill, which would keep Washington, D.C. running. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, there are a few obstacles in the way. As millions of Americans will grow with friends and family this Labor Day weekend, there's a growing concern looming over the nation's capital. This is their job. I'm talking about them doing their job and making sure that the government doesn't shut down. It is not a difficult thing. It is very simple. The government's metaphorical bank book is set to go broke later this month when the current fiscal year comes to an end.
Annually, we put out a budget, we show the enormity of the problem, and yet nobody wants to continue to address it. An Office of Management and Budget spokesperson issued a statement to CNN that said, quote, it is clear that a short-term continuing resolution will be needed next month. The White House says a CR is needed to pay for assistance-based initiatives, including WIC, which stands for the Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. This is what they are supposed to do, make sure that the government works, and key, key vital uh, pieces of programs continue to get funded. But there's a laundry list of disagreements between congressional officials keeping the threat of a potential shutdown alive. It's going to take a long, a concerted, bipartisan effort to get our fiscal house back in order. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Biden administration is proposing a gun rule aimed at curbing the gun show and Internet sales loopholes. The rule would clarify a situation in which someone is engaged in the business of dealing firearms. Currently, purchases from private sellers, whether at a gun show or somewhere else, do not require a background check in most states. But under the proposed new rule, some of those private sellers may no longer fall within the background check exception. They would need to get licensed and run background checks. The proposed rule was unveiled Thursday by the U.S. Justice Department. Once published in the Federal Register, it will be open for public comment for 90 days. President Biden is making a move he hopes will ensure two-thirds of all new cars sold in the U.S. by 2032 are electric. So his administration has come up with a plan to help U.S. automakers manufacture more electric vehicles. The Energy Department just announced $12 billion in grants and loans to assist in making that a reality. The money will be used to convert existing factories into plants that make hybrid and electric vehicles. The announcement comes as a new Texas law goes into effect today that imposes a fee of $400 for the regist registration of a new electric vehicle and $200 for registration renewal. Now, the bill aims to include electric vehicles as part of the existing gasoline fuel tax, which is used for road improvements. New studies debunking the idea of beer goggles, an idea that suggests that consuming alcohol makes people seem better looking. The study published in the Journal of Studies on Alcohol and Drugs found that alcohol did not increase perceptions of attractiveness, but rather it gave people so-called liquid courage, making them more likely to approach people they find attractive. While previous research asked participants to view photos and rate people's attractiveness when sober and intoxicated, this time the researchers asked participants to pick people they would most like to interact with in a future experiment. They found that drunk participants were nearly two times more likely to pick one of their top four attractive candidates. Check the box. We've officially done a story on beer goggles. <laughs> Time now is 538, 77 degrees. Good day, people. We're all dealing with dry, dead lawns and plants these days. Up next, uh, steps a local business is taking to adapt to the extreme heat. I'm glad you read that one. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if I would have made it through. Okay, so we're starting at 77 degrees, but uh, not as cool as it was yesterday morning. However, you know, things are going to start to look good this month. It is September 1st, so we are very positive about that. We'll be right back. 541, as you may have heard, summer 2023 is now taken the title of hottest summer on record in San Antonio. And it's left businesses having to adapt to the extreme heat. So one catering company, Chef to Table, has taken all of their gardens indoors. The owner says in June she lost what was left of her outdoor garden to the extreme heat. So she purchased a tower garden and her harvest took off from there. She says even as the seasons change, her hope remains the same. Texas isn't the only people that are in a drought. Obviously, everywhere is, you know, so it's just become a struggle. And I just wanted to have a better option for people to feed themselves and their families. The U.S. Drought Monitor just released an updated map of the drought conditions in south central Texas. It shows that San Antonio and the Hill Country are now all classified as exceptionally dry. 542, 76 degrees. If you own a Kia, you may not want to get in the trunk anytime soon. Up next, we're going to tell you about a malfunction that could leave you trapped inside. Don't do it. And Transguide right now, I-10 at the Y, looking really good. Very light traffic still in that part of town. We'll check with Stephen coming up. And welcome back. It is 546. So in your morning consumer headlines, a warning for people who like to get in the trunk of their cars. Kia has recalled nearly 320,000 cars due to a trunk malfunction. So the recall affects Rio and Optima vehicles, including hybrids from 2016 to 2018. So the trunk latch 
may break and not open from the inside, which increases the risk of a person inside the trunk becoming trapped. Now, according to a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration report, the recalled cars failed to comply with federal motor vehicle safety standard requirements. Kia will mail letters to notify vehicle owners affected by that recall by October 19th. Now, customers can take their cars to a Kia dealer dealership to have that problem fixed free of charge. Trader Joe's has issued another recall. The company says its Texas tamale company, Gourmet Black Bean Tamales, might contain milk allergens. The Food and Drug Administration said it issued the recall after consumers complained items didn't disclose of the presence of milk. No illnesses have been reported. All potentially affected products have been removed from shelves. They were sold in nine states, including Trader Joe's here in Texas. Anyone who bought the tamales should throw them out or return them for a full refund. This is Trader Joe's sixth product recall just since the month of July. And from this angle, I'm looking at some peaceful shots of the roadway so far this morning. Let's get check in with Stephen Cavazos. Tranquil traffic on this Friday morning, guys. Thankfully, our morning commute uh, started off bumpy, but has since improved. You can see it right behind me, 90 at 35. Uh, hopefully, it stays that way, but we ne never really can expect anything. That we can always expect surprises, I should say, uh, anytime the commute does get moving, especially with schools back in session and a lot more folks hitting the rope. There's I-10 at the Y, and you can see traffic again has stayed pretty steady, but slowly getting a little bit busier as we take a look around town. Now, our map has stayed quiet for the most part, so anyone that has to hit the road in the next few minutes shouldn't experience any trouble out there, but we can expect to see some new of transportation laws take effect. Now, this is just some of what we have on our website right now at KSAT.com, but these are some of those transportation laws to be on the lookout for. You can see it right there on your screen. Now, we'll start there with House Bill 11, pardon me, 1127, can't read today. It's a, a pedestrian law that makes it legal for people to walk on a roadway if there are no sidewalks available. So just be on the lookout for any of those pedestrians that may be walking on uh, facing traffic. Now, House Bill uh, 1885, that actually in uh, drivers will expect to see some temporary speed limits during certain situations. So that's during inclement weather or could be during construction or congestion. And then we also have a new stop law, uh, law that determines where drivers need to stop at intersections as well. But that information is on our website. We have a full list of it. Uh, a lot of new laws taking effect today. So uh, I was reading through some of them re regarding infrastructure and transportation. This is just some of what we have on our website at KSAT.com. We'll show that again a little bit later on in the newscast. But uh, thankfully, a lot of drivers out there shouldn't expect to see any trouble this early, but just always be on the lookout. A lot to digest this first day it, of September. It is, and you know, reading through it, you always want to make sure that you're a law-abiding sure. citizen out there, so uh, just make sure to watch out, and for those pedestrians as well, just know what to expect. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we're going to look back on June, July, and August one last time, and then we're <laughs> going to put okay. it in the rearview mirror <laughs> and say goodbye forever, but Yay. we have to talk about all the records that we set. Uh, it was the hottest <laughs> summer on record, and we're talking about the meteorological summer, so we measure that with the months of June, July, and August. August was the hottest month we've ever seen of any month in San Antonio's recorded history. We had the longest stretch of 100 degree days this summer. We had the most 105 degree plus days in a year by a long shot. 26 record highs throughout the summer and this was the ninth driest summer on record. Uh, and the list continues. If you wanna read more about it, we have a great article on ksat.com. Uh, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery uh, wrote that up yesterday, and it, it looks back at what is going to be a summer for the record books. There's no doubt about it. But we are moving into September, and we're going to keep the positive vibes and uh, stay looking forward. And I think that by the time we get into the end of September, kind of like we talked about yesterday, things will start to change and evolve, and we'll finally get some cooler temperatures headed our way. In the meantime, the summer has taken a toll when it comes to the drought. The drought monitor came in yesterday, shows that we've got exceptional drought growing along the Texas Gulf Coast and back into parts of Louisiana, but also here in the, uh, the hill country in central Texas where it's been there most of the year, but we're starting to see it expand. All of Bear County now included in that in exceptional drought, uh, even though we did get some rain from Tropical Storm Herald, if you remember, but it wasn't enough. And so the drought continues to grow and expand. Uh, and that's taking a toll on the rivers too. New Oasis, no flow there. That's around Uvalde. Uh, we checked in on the Frio, no flow around Concan. Doesn't mean there's not water there, it's just not flowing. And this is well below average. Same story from Medina, Guadalupe. We're not finding any flows in our area rivers and I, I suppose it comes as no surprise as bad as this drought has been. Now, uh, 
the Kamal still is flowing, as it often is. It's at 159 cubic feet per second, but below average there. So if you're doing some tubing, uh, the Kamal does look okay this weekend. Outside right now, we've got 79 degrees at the airport. Feels like 82 when you factor in the humidity that we have this morning. The humidity did make a return, uh, and so it feels a little more sticky out there. 74 in Seguin, 68 right now in Bernie. In the dew point trend today, those high dew points will fall off into the 50s this afternoon, so a little bit more of a dry heat uh, during the afternoon hours. We'll make it up to around 101 here in San Antonio. Some places maybe up to around 102. New Braunfels, Seguin, Floresville uh, could reach that mark. Big picture here, no rain across Texas. We've got some monsoonal rains out west, some showers around New Orleans, and there is a little bit of an upper level low right here, just kind of drifting, and it does move west, but what you'll notice on the west side of this, a lot of dry air. And we're on the wrong side of things, so it just doesn't really do much for us. I wish it, I wish it would. Uh, other than maybe bring us a shower or two on Sunday, that's all we can really put rain-wise in the seven-day forecast. So a lot of triple digits there. Uh, temperatures do slip below 100 potentially by Wednesday and Thursday. But bottom line, a hot Labor Day weekend. Yes, very hot. <laughs> yeah, we keep adding to that triple-digit mark. Uh, to that triple digit tally. Right. Been there, lived that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. 552, 76 degrees. Video game set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons that has been a hit with PC gamers this summer is now heading to the PlayStation console. We're going to get your first look at the new edition next. But don't be alarmed. I'm here with you. Baldur's Gate 3 might be the best example of playing Dungeons & Dragons without pen and paper or funny-looking dice. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. Here's the thing about describing Baldur's Gate 3 to people is I don't want to overwhelm them if they're not familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, as admittedly I am not super familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, but it is an incredibly in-depth simulation, a computer simulation of what it's like to play a campaign in Dungeons & Dragons. You're the same as me. You have a mind flare tadpole in your brain. Even if you don't know any of that, you're just in for this rich, layered, beautifully scripted, beautifully performed by these incredible actors and animated by beautiful visual animation. Some of the best facial animation, especially in a game of this scale. It's just a staggering accomplishment. You want to play the hero so badly? Fine. Let's make this interesting. The game has become wildly popular in the PC gaming space since launching in August and next heads to the PlayStation 5. Together, we might survive. I'll enjoy watching you try. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in the next hour, good morning, San Antonio. Manhunt underway for two prisoners who escaped custody, one on the East Coast, the other on the West Coast. What authorities are saying about those high profile prisoner escapes. Still ahead at Gardening with KSAT as we approach the fall season, some plants in your garden may still be thriving and will continue to thrive. So instead of throwing them away, you can transplant them. Sarah Costa will join us in studio to tell us about the do's and don'ts of transplanting plants. Recent shootings involving San Antonio police officers and suspects with violent criminal histories are raising concerns about the system used to determine how suspects get bail. Coming up, what law experts are saying about the magistration process. And as we approach 558, looking live at Highway 90 and military, no problems, pretty light traffic this morning as we head into the long Labor Day weekend. A lot of folks are gonna hit the road for late summer fun. We're gonna talk to Stephen about your Friday commute coming up. There are a couple of limited exceptions for people who, for example, have committed a capital murder. After recent shootings involving San Antonio police officers, concerns being raised about the system used to determine how suspects get bail. We'll hear from San Antonio law experts about the magistration process and how it works. Plus the latest on the aftermath of Edelia. President Joe Biden expected to visit Florida tomorrow to survey the damage, what the recovery process is looking like today. Outside with live cam as we begin a new month, one notable change to our forecast, the humidity is back in full force. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts 
right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday, September 1st. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And yes, like you said, the humidity is back to greet us on this Friday morning. It's like, oh, we don't miss you. That's okay. Stay away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's back. Well, it is Friday and the beginning of the long Labor Day weekend. A lot of folks have outdoor plans this weekend and for good reason. Justin is in for Mike to wrap up the work week and we say good morning. Good morning, good morning to you and the Labor Day weekend forecast is more of the same. A lot of triple digits, a lot of heat, maybe a small chance for shower on Sunday, but it's nothing to get excited about because it's a very small chance. We're talking 10% or less. And yes, humidity is back. It is uh, surged back in this morning. I think it's temporary. By the afternoon, you'll see the humidity levels come back down. But in the meantime, it feels pretty sticky. 76 at the airport, 74 in New Braunfels, 73 in Seguin. Some 60s on the map there in Bernie, 66 degrees for you with calm winds. And the forecast for today will be up around 101. Most of the state will be in the triple digits today with uh, some upper 90s in North Texas. Uh, it, we do start a new month, but not much has changed here in the weather forecast. Uh, a lot of heat this weekend, and the tropics are starting to heat up too. We're going to look at that for you coming up here in just a few minutes. But for now, on this Friday morning, we'll toss it over to Stephen and look at those roadways. Hopefully, it's all quiet. Yeah, all good over here, Justin. Thankfully, let's get a look there. 90 at military. We're off to a good start as we enter the 6 a.m. hour. Let's get a look behind me where the east and westbound lanes don't look too crowded just yet. So if you plan on hitting the roads, maybe heading in from Castroville, that would be a great time to do it. As you can see behind me also, our map is showing a quiet start for anyone that has to hit the roads right here in the next few minutes. But if your travels are taking you into San Antonio this early in the morning from any of these communities, that same trend of luck continues. We see that it's still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 29 minutes at this hour. 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia. It's about a little more than half an hour, 33 minutes is what drivers can expect, and a 27 commute for our friends down in Floresville. So uh, our morning started off just with a few bumps out there in the roadway, but as we enter a busy hour, we're off to a good start. We're keeping our fingers crossed. It stays that way, but there are closures to be on the lookout for. We'll have that update coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Recent shootings involving San Antonio police officers and suspects with a criminal history are raising concerns about the system used to determine how suspects get bail. In each of those shootings, Police Chief William McManus shared his frustrations. Some of the suspects involved were out on bond with warrants. Eddie Santos spoke to several law experts who say setting bail is not a simple one-size-fits-all formula. If you commit a violent crime, you should be in jail. If you are a habitual offender, you need to be in jail. And given the recent shootings of several San Antonio police officers at the hands of violent suspects, Chief William McManus says they're a prime example that some people should not be let out of jail. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says the law doesn't allow that. Everyone, including someone who's accused of murder, has a right to a bond. But the law has few exclusions to denying bail. There are a couple of limited exceptions for people who, for example, have committed a capital murder. Uh, but even then, there has to be a hearing and a determination by a magistrate that bail should be denied. So Gerald Remy is a St. Mary's professor emeritus who occasionally fills in as a magistrate judge. The magistrate judge decides bail by considering previous convictions, the suspect's ability to afford bail, and an educated guess as to whether they will commit another crime if released. Remy says it's harder than it sounds. It is so difficult to do it and get it right, and it's so easy to look at a case in hindsight and say, well, you didn't do it quite right this time. These latest cases making headlines are the exception, warned St. Mary's Law Assistant Professor Michael Smith. We should be careful about taking these dramatic instances and trying to shape wide ranging uh, uh, pervasive policy based on these instances. Smith says bail reform could have significant consequences for anyone who is arrested. Patty Santos, Case at 12 News. And after more than two hours of deliberations, a Bear County jury convicted Sasha Scar of murder. She was found guilty in the shooting death of San Antonio rapper Martin DeRuin in 2021 at his apartment complex near La Cantera. Now, she was not arrested until two weeks later after his body was found. Scar declined a plea deal for 20 years last week. She now faces the possibility of up to life in prison. Every day is, is, is very hard. I haven't slept in a very long time. Um, it's just, as a mother, to lose a son, 
And to lose him that way, it's, it's just, it's unimaginable. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody, nobody. The jury will start deliberating today to decide how long Scar will be in jail. It is September 1st. That means new laws surrounding school safety, crime, gender, voting, and guns in Texas officially go into effect today. Governor Greg Abbott and Texas legislators passed more than 1,100 bills during the 88th legislature, and 774 of those are now law. Among those is a sweeping school safety bill that requires an armed person at every campus. Also, the puppy mill bill that clamps down on breeders the Death Star bill that returns sovereign regulatory powers to Texas, and a bill that adjusts sales tax for several health-related and family care products. Other new laws address books in schools, transgender issues, fentanyl, workplace violence, electric vehicle registration, and hair discrimination. For a list of the most notable laws that are going into effect, you can visit our article on kset.com. Now to the aftermath of Idalia, the storm bringing damaging tornadoes, severe flooding, and powerful winds from Florida to the Carolinas. President Biden vowing federal resources to the area's hardest hit as he plans to look at the damage tomorrow. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest on the recovery process as it's just beginning. This morning, Idalia from Florida to the Carolinas, leaving behind a trail of devastation. In the big bend of the Sunshine State, where Idalia made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, buildings and businesses destroyed. It was heartbreaking, shed many tears, and just thank God nobody died. Houses ripped from their foundations, cars and debris littered the landscape. Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, more than 24 hours after Dahlia had passed, most of the waters have receded, except some neighborhoods are still flooded, like this one, up to 10 inches. This mother of five returned from evacuation to find her home inundated with up to two feet of water. Outside, this pile of their belongings, all of it destroyed. You just brought it all out here? Yeah, uh, they're going to, we have a dump truck or the city said they were going to come pick everything up. So we're just trying to get it all out, wow. get the house dried out. It sucks to lose everything. Everything, including her home itself. Where are you going to go after this? Um, well, we still kind of have to figure that out, but we're safe and healthy and we'll everything is replaceable. President Biden signing a major disaster declaration for Florida with plans to survey the damage on Saturday. So our immediate priority is working with state and local officials to really understand what their needs are. President Biden is asking Congress for billions of dollars in extra disaster relief funding in the wake of Adelia and the wildfire disaster in Maui. M. Wynn, ABC News, St. Petersburg. Back here in Texas, the Austin Police Department investigating a deadly shooting that occurred at the Arboretum Shopping Center last night. Reports indicate two people have been killed, three more were hurt. The shooter also died of a gunshot wound. One person was taken to a hospital with life-threatening injuries, while two others were treated at the scene with minor injuries. Authorities have not given any information on if the suspect and victims knew each other. The White House is calling on Congress to pass a temporary spending bill which would keep Washington, D.C. running after a potential government shutdown. Now, the government's metaphorical bank book is set to go broke later this month when the current fiscal year comes to an end. The White House says a short-term continuing resolution is needed to pay for assistance-based initiatives, including WIC, the Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. Now, the Senate returns from summer break next week. The House comes back on September 12th. Justice Department says its election threats task forces charge 14 cases involving threats against the election community. Guilty police were secured yesterday in two separate cases involving threats against election workers in Arizona and Georgia. And earlier this month, a Texas man was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for threats he made to an official in the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. The DOJ says nine convictions have been secured. Well, be careful what you share on social media as experts are warning you may be spreading a scam and not even know it. The scam is called bait and switch and it often starts with an emotional plea to share a post about a missing child or injured pet just found on the side of the road. Then after that, it's shared all over social media. The author of the fake post edits it to something completely different, including a malicious link to get people to click on it to steal their money or information. Pause, take a breath. Before you share, consider the source verify that person is a real person. 
You can check a person's profile or if it's new or if they have new friends, it may be fake. And if the comments are turned off, that is another big red flag. Friday morning, 610, 76 degrees. A new space game is available on Microsoft and it's already has many people talking why it's being called the biggest game launch of the year still ahead. We've all been dealing with extreme heat, drying out our lawns and our plants. After the break, we'll talk about the steps one local business is taking to ad adapt to the extreme Texas heat. And just the other day, I was looking at the raincoat that I wasn't using anymore <laughs> this week. I was like, I'd like to use that again. But for now, it's just hanging there, waiting, just wishing. But for now, we're at 75 degrees. We'll be right back.